Hey guys, it's Chris back again. I figure I'd do a top 10 list. Today I was thinking of doing my top 10 JRPGs. Uh, this is not going to be in any particular order. I really don't feel like sorting them out. They're all worth playing, so it's basically just games I want to recommend to you guys from my own personal tastes and ones I actually got in my collection. So, uh, this, this list is kind of based off of the JRPGs I've actually beaten. So, uh, you know, it's ones I actually enjoyed, not ones I heard are good. So, let's get it started here. Like I said, in no particular order. And as you can tell by the shirt, you know what's going to be first. That Final Fantasy, specifically Final Fantasy VI is my favorite one. Um, I much more enjoy the old 2D style of them with the ATB combat, more so than all the newer stuff that's more action based. Um, and I enjoy the art style, the world, the characters, everything about this game. So let's keep it moving. And then the next one is the series I started playing JRPGs with. And maybe not this particular version of the game, but this is the only physical copy I have of this one. And that is Dragon Quest II is specifically the one that uh, I find the best. Um, now I started with Dragon Warrior 1 on NES, but uh, we rented or borrowed uh, Dragon Warrior 2 quite a bit back in the day. And I have beaten it, and I feel like it was kind of revolutionary for JRPGs because Dragon Warrior 1, although Final Fantasy did this before, I feel like um, Dragon Warrior 2 uh, did the party system a lot better than uh, Final Fantasy. And then it continued on with uh, Dragon Quest 3, which is probably the best of these three, but I play Dragon Quest 2 the most on NES, so that's the one I'll pick. Alright, next up, another one, um, not sure how you guys will feel about this, but I think Grandia 2 is one of the best JRPGs as well. Uh, the, uh, the full 3D graphics were really impressive to me at the time, and the battle system is still pretty unique. Um, I've seen another uh, JRPG kind of copy the system, it was some, like, visual novel um, based RPG of some sort and it had a very similar combat system where you uh, you have like an ATB bar like uh, Final Fantasy but when you get to the action part of the bar where the enemy can initiate an action you can attack them and interrupt their attack so they have to start their ATB bar all the way over so I thought that was pretty cool for this series obviously uh, Grandia 1 started it all, but I feel like Grandia 2 perfected the formula, so yeah. Next up, this one probably won't be that much of a shock, but um, Chrono Trigger. Here's the DS version, because I don't have the Super Nintendo version. Um, this, and I think the currently updated Steam version might be the best versions to play. Uh, the Steam version was a mess for a while, but I think they've mostly fixed that. And then this DS version is quite nice other than being stuck on a handheld. But, you know, if you play the SNES version, that's a fine version as well. It's just this one has the most extras. Um, yeah, I, I have the SNES version on the, uh, like the analog FPGA systems. But yeah, um, it's very cool. It's got that time travel uh, storyline. It's got... A mix of medieval and then modern, like futuristic type stuff, because it's time travel, obviously. But uh, the characters are cool. You know, the same, the same uh, artist who did Dragon Quest series and Dragon Ball Z. So uh, yeah, I like it. I'm not gonna go too in depth with all these games because I don't want the video to be super long. But here's one I really enjoyed when it first came out, and that is Tales of Symphonia. Now, this GameCube version, I think, is still the best, even though it has less extras, simply because every other version they ported is based off the PS2 version, which runs 30 FPS. 
And this game just looks and feels really good with the 60 FPS battles. Uh, I really liked the art style at the time because with the PS2 RPGs, it seemed like they were going more for realistic proportions. Uh, no world map, stuff like that. And this, you know, it had the nice cel-shaded graphics, it had a world map, the characters were kind of chibi style, like the old JRPGs, so it hit that nerve for me of nostalgia, and the combat is really fun, it's like a fighting game. I think uh, the Tales series still does the best action-based combat of any JRPG. I thought Tales of Arise was really good, but this is definitely my favorite one of the series. Alright, and now we got another Final Fantasy coming up. And this is probably tied with Final Fantasy VI for my favorite, and that is Final Fantasy IV. Specifically, this PSP Complete Collection is uh, the best version. It has really good uh, pixel art style that's kind of upgraded to more like 32-bit style of uh, sprites. And uh, you can use a new... Um, I think it's orchestrated OST, and you can switch to the old Super Nintendo OST, which is nice. Plus, it has uh, the two expansions that Square Enix made later, uh, the After Years, and I forget what the one in the middle was called. There's like a, I think it might be called Intermission, actually, but uh, yeah, it's, it's really good value, this version. It sucks they do not port this version of the game to modern consoles. Uh, the Recent Pixel Remaster, it's an okay version, but it's really just the vanilla Super Nintendo version with some issues going on with it. But yeah, I would highly recommend, if you don't have a PSP, uh, either put this on like a hacked Vita or uh, just play it on emulator. It's really good. Alright. Next up, we'll have a more modern JRPG, although it's a remake of an older one on PS1. The PS1 version and the PSP version of this is fine, but this is just an excellent version of Star Ocean's Second Story, and this is the R version. I just thought they did a really good job upgrading the visuals while maintaining the art style of the original. It has really fun combat. I do like the world of this game. Although, Star Ocean 3 kind of <laughs> ruined the lore, but I won't get into that plot twist. Let's just forget that plot twist happened in Star Ocean 3, because uh, it seems Square Enix wants to make people forget it as well. But yeah, this kind of has the style of Octopath Traveler, like the, the HD 2D look or whatever. But I think this actually looks better than the Octopath games, to be honest. Um, this is just fantastic. I would recommend it. In fact, I wouldn't mind double dipping on this for the Switch version as well. Maybe someday, as long as it doesn't get too expensive, which can happen. All right, next up, a very good um, PS1 JRPG, and that is, yes, yes, the legendary Xenogears. Now, I... Didn't know much about this when it came out, but I played it on one of the demo discs on Final Fantasy VIII, I want to say, had the demo disc. Maybe I'm wrong on that, but I was like, wow, this feels a lot like uh, Chrono Trigger. Just the visually and just, I don't know, I guess mostly visually and the music, but uh, it's definitely its own thing. It's It's more like... Um, I don't want to spoil it, but, uh, it's, it kind of involves space travel and then people landing on a planet, and it's got a lot of religious undertones to the story, but, uh, the combat is really fun. It's kind of like, um, it is kind of like Final Fantasy, I think, if I remember correctly, it has the ATB bar, but you use a combo system where you hit different buttons on the controller to do different moves. And depending on how you string them together, you get different attacks. Uh, they went on to make, you know, Xeno Saga and the Xenoblade series. But I never liked those games as much as this one. I think this is their best. Oh yes, it also has mech combat, which they only really brought back for Xenoblade X on the Wii U. But I feel like it was less cumbersome in this. In Xenoblade X, 
it takes a long time to get the mechs, and then they use fuel and stuff, and they're really expensive to maintain in that game. So, yeah. But, yeah, this is my... Probably one of my top PS1 RPGs as well. Alright, next up. This is one I played quite a bit back in the day. Beat it multiple times. And that is, of course, Earthbound on Super Nintendo. Very expensive game now. Uh, sadly, I only have the cartridge. But I did get this for a really good price back in the day. Uh, I think it was probably... I want to say it was around between 2004 and 2006 that I bought this. And it was at a used game shop for like 20 bucks or something, which is ridiculous considering what it goes for now. I think the cart only might even be up to a couple hundred dollars. Completing the box with the strategy guide is like probably, I think it's like $2,000, $3,000 now. Maybe that's a little bit of a high estimate. But yeah, very good uh, modern JRPG with a lot of humorous stuff to it. It kind of involves aliens as the central antagonist. Um, Mother 3 is cool, but to me, this is the best one. It just hit all the right marks. A lot of funny humor in it. All right, last up. Here's a holy grail for a lot of Sega Saturn collectors, and you should probably know what this is. Yes, Panzer Dragoon Saga. Now I'm picking this one simply because it was very impressive technically for like an end of life game on the Saturn. Uh, it has a very unique uh, gameplay style melding, you know, the rail shooter Panzer Dragoon games with JRPG gameplay. It's got nice exploration in my opinion because it mixes being able to fly around with uh, on foot exploration as well. And the combat is very unique. It, uh, it uses a system that was kind of carried over into Panzer Dragoon Orta, where you can circle around the enemy to hit different weak points on them. But obviously this is more ATB style, like uh, active time battle. It's similar to real time, but not, or it's similar to turn base, but it's a little bit between real time and turn based. But yeah, it's, uh, it's impressive technically. It really showed off the best that Saturn could do. I think it rivaled, you know, stuff like Final Fantasy VII and VIII graphically because this was full 3D where those were, you know, polygon character models on 2D backdrops. But yeah, it's very expensive now. I think I paid maybe $250 for this in the early 2000s. And now this is, what, like two three thousand $3,000 on eBay. <laughs> So, yeah, I'm actually scared to play this at this point. I'd probably rather play backup discs. But yeah, I have a very, very clean copy here, as you can see. Hopefully I don't, like, drop anything as I'm showing. <laughs> it makes me really nervous. I got the black sleeves as well. There's some variations with white sleeves. But, uh, yeah, so that is my top 10 JRPG picks or recommendations. Hope you guys enjoyed this short little video, and I'll see you next time. Alright, peace out.